Hello and welcome back to the Gigabyte Challenge number 7 here on Hefla TV 1. This is going to be just a best of one between Maya and Sandy and Meet Your Makers Dota. I did not know that this was actually going on. There was a lot of administration stuff that was going poorly in the background, but finally we're actually in the game, so I guess without further ado, we'll commence. I'm Grandis V, and I'll be joined by Mike Loris once again. I think we've probably had everything go wrong. I mean, it was Twitch went wrong, Dota went wrong, Dota servers went wrong, and now just the admins are on crack or something, because they thought this game already launched, but apparently no one was actually looking. So uh, we are in the game without an admin, so nobody tell the admins, I guess. Yeah, I, I have no idea what went wrong. Uh, looks like there's a little bit of an issue on the stream, although I'm not dropping frames, so it should be fine. Uh, but this is also... The last game, yeah, there's something going incredibly wrong with the intro video. So um, after this game, I'll go ahead and do a restart before we do the American Dota later on in the evening. Um, but hopefully it all um, holds up well. <laughs> I don't know. Crossing my fingers, I mean, the last thing we need is some hardware issues on my end. I mean, my chair is already broken. Like, what more can go wrong? That's a different kind of hardware issue that, yes. well, you can't really... I guess you actually can go to, like, a Best Buy or something to fix that, in theory. I don't know if they sell great chairs there but who knows who cares we're in another game and it's a game that yeah. uh well we thought was already launched we thought was unavailable to us but we are in there nonetheless and it's looking pretty vanilla as of right now uh razor shadow shaman skywrath lycanthrope of course didn't get banned out so we're gonna see him pick first for mym yeah no big surprises there uh my insanity just scared more of the tinker coming out from uh, meet your makers and the lycanthrope so that'll leave him available we hardly ever see him actually in the first pick but if you leave him in the pool it's almost certain that somebody's going to take him up yeah it's really hard to deal with a lycan pretty much no matter what kind of lineup he is in it's best i think in the we're just going to group up and push things kind of lineup and then late game if you don't exactly get your push going correctly then you will always have a lycanthrope to fall back on so I mean, that's a pretty good way of playing it though if they do want to just have the lycan on split push duty and then, and then build a, re a rather regular lineup around him that's also a good way to go yeah for now my insanity respond with the shadow shaman a solid hero in his own right decent against the lycanthrope before he gets a bkb um i don't know offers some good push for themselves and my insanity are gonna have to decide what they want to combo with that um We'll just have to see. Right now, it's looking pretty standard and nothing too out of the ordinary, although I'm hoping one of these teams will pull something out of the hat. Like a Death Prophet right now would be still pretty standard, but with a Death Prophet Shadow Shaman, they would be able to push a lot harder than the Lycan would be able to split push. So just uh, forcing the Lycan to fight early and often is also a good way to go since early on the Lycan is rather unimpressive. He needs a couple of minutes in order to get his Flads up, Power Treads, uh, Necro Book, BKB, those types of items before he's really comfortable fighting. But for now, it's going to be a Razor Shadow Shaman opening. Yeah, no big surprises there. Razor fares pretty well up against the Lycanthrope. Uh, he can break the Static Link fairly easily with his own ultimate, but if you're able to get a good duration Static Link off on the Lycan, his impact is going to be pretty much or, um, drop down to the summons that'll be able to put out, which are scary in their own right. Um, but they'll also get their hands on the Death Prophet, so the push you were talking about coming out from Mayan Sandy is actually going to be coming out from Meet Your Makers, and this is quite possibly the scariest opener you can have in the current patch. Yeah, this is just such a focused two-hero pick, right? Usually, the first two heroes that we see are rather uh, rather generic. Like, they could go into any lineup, i.e. Razor, Shadow Shaman, those types of heroes. But Death Prophet and Lycan, when you put them together, it's very clear where MIM are heading in this particular game. The question is, how deep do they want to go in picking these up? Like, do they want to go so deep as to pick up, like, an Enchantress really early on? Or are they just going to play with some more of the vanilla supports? That's a question that MYM are going to have to think about in this uh, next band pick phase. Yeah, for now, the pressure is going to coming the, be coming the way of my insanity. We'll have to see how they're actually going to be able to deal with it. Shadow Shaman more than likely is going to be forced to put down his wards where he doesn't really want to. Whenever you have heroes at your tower, you have to do something. And usually that something means that Shadow Shaman has to drop all of his spells. Uh, but really, with that Shadow Shaman, you want to be putting pressure onto the enemy's towers and not defending your own. Yeah, and actually it's MIM to, pick, uh, to get rid of the Enigma. I thought if Enigma was picked at all, it would have been on the side of Meet Your Makers. But for right now, they don't want to deal with that uh, 
at least not now. They could still go for an H's profit and kind of have the similar thing going. But I think as it stands, banning out that Enigma means that Lycan and Death Prophet are going to be the only pushers for MYM. It's still a lot of push, but it's not going to be 100% committed. Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't have really liked to see Nature's Prophet coming out for them, although their push would be ridiculously scary. It's going to put a lot of pressure on the supports in order to initiate those team fights and actually be able to make something happen. Because with the Nature's Prophet, Lycan, and Death Prophet, um, you're going to run at the towers and that's fine and all, but if my Insanity are able to take the team fight advantage, it doesn't matter um, how much push you have if you lose the team fight. Yeah, and speaking of that team fight, I would think it would be really good for Meteor Makers to. Well, they ban out a Wraith King. I would have said they should be uh, looking towards something like banning out a Tidehunter, who is really good at shutting down Lycan's damage potential. And also, if you know you're going to be pushed, then a great way to kind of counter that is to just have a crushing team fight, so that whenever the enemies do come knocking at your door, you're able to just squish them really easily. But Wraith King's going to get the boot, as will Nature's Prophet, Skyrath Mage. So we're going to see what these support pickups are going to be like for Meet Your Makers. Earthshaker would be a fantastic one for my insanity right now. Yeah, I'd like to see either Earthshaker or Tidehunter picked up out of the uh, second banning stage. I think both of those heroes would function really well in their lineup. Uh, allowing the Shadow Shaman to roam early and get in range for his shackles, as well as offering some more counter push with the Fissure is always something nice. Damn, up against the Summon's base push coming out from the Lycan throw. And then the Tidehunter in lane does really well against Lycan, and then also gives them a pretty large teamfight advantage with Ravage. Yeah, so that could be a direction they want to go sure. for. Uh, obviously, the Earthshaker we mentioned that is... Going to give them uh, a good amount of initiation as well for the Shadow Shaman. Long range fissure into Shadow Shaman slowly walking up for a Hex or Shackle or whatever. Could mean that they could apply some pressure early on. And again, that's a great way to make sure that Lycan doesn't get off to a roaring start is to just gank him early on and put some pressure on him and force him to fight early. Ooh, it's going to be a Wisp. This is going to be like the rattiest game of all time. Well, I'm not even sure if it's going to be ratty coming up for Meet Your Makers. They might just barrel down these towers because, I don't know, that Wisp pick is... I don't know, it puts so much pressure on my insanity to make something happen around the map. Their laning stage early on is going to be pretty weak with Shadow Shaman Io. Uh, the extra movement speed is nice for Shadow Shaman and all, um, but that combo really doesn't do a lot. They're going to be playing fairly passive early on and might get a kill in their lane, but other than that, this Lycanthrope and Death Prophet are going to have a pretty easy time uh, getting up their early items, and that's when they're really scariest, is when they can get just that one or two early items and just barrel down the towers. But my insanity, go for the tiny as well. Um... I'm not sure you'd go for anything else with the Wisp. Honestly, I'm just not liking the Wisp pick here. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it was the game I cast with you earlier today, where it was Wisp Gyrocopter, or was that with Coucher? Um, if it was earlier today, it was with Coucher, but we've okay, cast well, a Wisp Gyrocopter game before. Yeah, Wisp Gyrocopter would have been a decent way to go. It's uh, You drop your Gyrocopter right in the middle of the fight, pop a BKB, and then just go to town with missiles and Damn stuff. So it would have been a good way to go, but it looks like they're going to get the Tiny instead. Possibly dual laning the mid lane? Yeah, I don't know. It's probably where they're going to end up going. Um, or just leave the Razor solo mid and then just go for a defensive tri lane. But I think the dual lane mid is the most probable laning choice coming up for my insanity. I don't know. I, I'd like to see that a lot better. And uh, well, they still need one more core here of my insanity. Whereas Meet Your Makers, they're still looking for another support for themselves. With an Earthshaker, they could go for a Marana and look to do some of that shenanigans. Also, an Ancient Apparition wouldn't be completely terrible for them. Uh, I don't know. Just They have some pretty wide options as far as their secondary support pick. Reserve time. Well, for now, they're not going to go for the support, but instead for the Batrider. Uh, Batrider is kind of interesting here. You can't really lasso the Razor very effectively until you have a Force Staff. And, I don't know, Tiny and Io are usually going to come in after the bat initiation, but if you're able to stop any of those heroes from getting off their spells, Shadow Shaman getting off his wards, or if you're able to focus down Tiny before a fight, it's really strong, and it's going to make pushing high ground a lot easier for Meet Your Makers. Um, as far as their next support, I'd kind of like to see a Disruptor if it's not banned out uh, by my insanity, but we'll see. Yeah, so Disruptor would, of course, give them the option of sending back either the Tiny or Wisp, and then picking off whoever they don't send back once they relocate in. So it's a nice little combination to have. And it's uh, okay with the Earthshaker. Like, it's not the most deadly of roams, but if you get your hands on the mid lane with the Wisp is really fragile early on, or even the Tiny is not exactly the most durable, it'll be a solid combination. But Disruptor is going to get the boot, so he's not going to be seen in this particular game. Would it fit pretty well for MYM? And, uh, well, what should my Insanity be looking to pick up for their last, do you think? 
Presumably they're looking for an offlaner here, and well, I would have said Tide would be the first thing that comes to mind, but they might also consider picking up a Centaur, just offering another Blink Initiation. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure there's anything really outlandish that they'd pick up. I, I think it's just going to be a Centaur. Could be a Centaur. They could even go for something like a Viper, perhaps? Just try to lock down the lanes as much as possible. I wouldn't like the Viper very much. I think he'd kind of be left to his own devices. Up against a Lycanthorpe, that's definitely an option. But he wouldn't be able to get that much unless they committed the aggressive dual lane with Shadow Shaman Viper. And that lane just doesn't have a lot of catching potential. Uh, both here is incredibly slow. Alright, so they only have 10 seconds left. So, my insanity, if ever is the time to pull out a weird pick, I think this is probably it. Okay. No weird picks here, it's just going to be that uh, initiator, maybe not the blink initiation, but uh, still Clockwork can get into the fights, and he's uh, pretty good at catching the Batrider, also just keeping tabs of the Batrider in general with those Rocket players certainly will be very useful for my insanity. Yeah, as well as isolating the like and throw. If you keep him in the cogs throughout the fight, you won't be able to do that much, although they don't have the best heroes to synergize with the Clockwork. They can drop a couple of nukes inside the cogs, but it's pretty much all going to be up to the Clockwork Damn to do the damage once he catches somebody out. So meet your makers. They're also going to look for their secondary support. And I don't think this clockwork is really going to change their support picks. Like, it shouldn't, really. Um, Wraith King's already out. They have the Bat Rider. Maybe they want to pick up something along the lines of Eventual Spirit to make Roshan's a little bit easier. That minus armor could certainly help a lot. But uh, I don't know. Versus Wisp Tiny, it's really scary to take these really fragile supports. Yeah, Definitely. I don't know, potentially something like a Rubik also wouldn't be that bad. Um, although there's not the greatest spells to steal, there's still plenty, and also just works very well against Clockwork, and they'll go ahead and snag that one up. Yeah, so a little bit of a displacement skill from the Rubik will be able to shove the Clockwork out of his cogs, which is generally just a mild inconvenience, but sometimes it can be the difference between life or death, especially if you have a couple heroes, or the Rubik himself is in the cogs. So uh, it'll be a nice little pickup for MYM. The spells to steal are mostly the Shadow Shaman wards. That's going to be like his top priority. But if he somehow finds a hook shot or a plasma field, then the Rubik could still contribute quite a large amount. Yeah, definitely. For now, just waiting to load into the game. And well, once we do so, we'll go ahead and introduce all of the players. Um, I don't know, as this isn't an official game as far as tickets are concerned, their names are not changed. So I'm probably going to butcher a good portion of them, unfortunately. That's their problem, though, because if they wanted to be called what they usually want to be called, then, well, they should have had that in there as the first place. But we are now officially in the game, guys. It took a hell of a long time, but let's see who's going to be playing what on the MYM side. We got 50 Centaur. Uh, I don't really remember who this guy was, because I said he was, his name was Is too good Ace? to call him anything else. Right, right. Okay, so Ace is going to be playing. Or Ace slash 50 Centaur is going to be on the Batrider. ASD Let's is going to be Rise on the Rubik. Bland is going to be supporting as the Earthshaker. Mid lane is going to be Arise's Death Prophet. And then that leaves Baby Knight on the Lycan. And as for the side of my and Sandy, we are going to have Milan playing on the Tiny. He's going to be supported by his best buddy in the world, the Wisp. Played by LeBron Dota. The safe lane is going to be taken up by la da 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 On the Razor, I have no idea what we're going to call him. Just Razor, probably. Oh my goodness. I know this is a Cyrillic name, but I'm going to completely mess it up. Booked up Russ. Oh, going to be playing on the Shadow Shaman. And, well, Russ maybe is probably easier. I don't know. Grazine going to be taking up the offlane clockwork. 30 seconds to show Yeah, B U K T O P Russ. Chat, if you have a real pronunciation for us, please let us know because, uh, well, we speak English pretty well, but that's about it. Unfortunate as that is, it's the truth. Uh, for now, the early wards come out from both sides, but no huge aggressive rotations. Clockwork drafts himself an observer ward um, to get some vision over the sport rotations, and Rubik gets himself a lane ward as well to keep tabs on where this clockwork is rotating to. For now, Earthshaker is kind of chilling up top, I presume, just to drop a fissure for the Batrider, then back to base to get some mana, and then back to lane. Uh, but yeah, this should ensure that Batrider gets himself a really early lane um, advantage as far as where he's going to get the equilibrium and ensures himself some experience under tower. But yeah, Blant just going to go back to base, make sure he has enough mana for a fissure, and then he'll waddle his way, presumably towards bottom. Looks like the mid lane is going to be a 1v2 lane. Death Prophet is more than capable of handling herself in this type of lane. The uh, tiny Wisp combination is pretty strong, but it does excel 
when it is on the Radiant side because you do get the easier stacks and stuff like that. So this game, it's not going to happen. They can, of course, go into the jungle and stack up, but Dire is just a little bit further away. Yeah, there's some weird warbling noises. Is that on your yeah, end? that was the phone that someone had to answer. That was my bad. Okay, that's that's completely fine. Either way, um... Yeah, that pretty much rounds up the mid lane. Earthshaker is going to do some stacking action for his Death Prophet to uh, secure some extra stacks. Or actually, more likely, the Batrider is going to be fireflying those down in a little bit in order to get an early Blink Dagger. And while Blount is going to make this pretty much a dual lane mid, as he's going to offer Fissure support for the Death Prophet. Although, unless Milan gets very low, I don't think they'll get any kills. Or if LeBron gets caught out alone. And really, there shouldn't be any angles for Fissure in this mid lane. So, unless Milan and LeBron actually want to go super aggressive onto a rise. The Fissure, as far as blocking off the Tiny and or Wisp, shouldn't actually be doing that. Like, the Tiny Wisp should should have some pretty decent safety in this lane. And Earthshaker, I'd imagine, just going to go right back to stacking up for the Batrider, who is, by the way, under some pretty heavy pressure up on top lane. He's 2 CS versus the 4 CS of Razor. But having all that uh, damage stolen out from him, making it a little bit difficult for the Razor. And 50 Centaur stuck very awkwardly in between the Shadow Shaman and Razor. Looks like he will Firefly his way to safety eventually. But uh, still getting zoned out pretty heavily, just by one hero, the Razor. Yeah, Grazine, he's able to interrupt the pull coming out from the Rubik. Stole a couple of those big CS uh, from him, so looking pretty good as far as experience is concerned. He ate a Fissure, which will delay things for now, but the other creeps will follow suit after being delayed a little bit. For now, they get a Shackles up on top on the 50 Centaur. Now the extra damage being stolen. He doesn't have Firefly available for another couple of seconds, but they won't be able to get this kill, I don't think. With the Boots, 50 Centaur is going to survive, or will he? The Plasma Field, they need one more right-click, and now with the Firefly now, uh, 50 Centaur is going to be just fine. And actually, la da 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 uh, might be in a little bit of trouble, going to eat a lot of damage from Tower, but in the end, um, yeah, no salve, so he's going to be... I don't know, low for quite some time. He has plenty of Tangos to get through that damage, however. We have an Invis Rune on Blonde, Potentially looking for a Fissure on mid, but for now, not going to throw it out. Yeah, he could possibly look to make something happen with that, but again, it'll be very hard to do so. Arise, almost getting tossed backwards, I think, but uh, Tiny, for whatever reason, Radiant's unable to make that spell there. connect. Uh, the mid dual lane mid is getting enough farm for Tiny, which is pretty much the goal of this dual lane. Of course, Death Prophet is getting a, her amount of farm as well. as Milan in a lot of trouble, actually, taking quite a large amount of damage from this Death Prophet. Zero base armor. Not fun for him, and it looks like we actually have a verdict for the Shadow Shaman. He's, his name is Victor, of course. Oh, yeah, okay. I can't believe I forgot that. It, it is Victor. It's Cyrillic. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. I'm not oh, sure I'm... if you're being sarcastic. No, I'm not. not. I'm not. Like, I, I've seen that name time and time again, and I don't know. I, I butcher it every time. <laughs> no, that's 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 not sarcastic at all. That's me genuinely being frustrated that I can't remember Victor. Okay, um, so from now on, I'm not gonna mess that up. Is the lanes are pretty passive and no kills just yet. Um, honestly, most of these lanes don't have the greatest killing potential. A Shadow Shaman and Razor can zone a Batrider, but with Firefly, she should keep himself pretty safe. Death Prophet, unless she oversteps her bounds and gets tossed under tower, shouldn't die as well. And Clockwork, he's doing a pretty good job of keeping himself safe. Yeah, I'm not really sure how much I like what this Earthshaker is doing, i.e. nothing. He's not stacking, he's only stacked the hard camp once. And then he's just been kind of patrolling back and forth between mid lane and bottom lane. Doing nothing except for leeching a couple of points of experience here and there. But if he was actually 100% dedicated towards push it, towards pulling, he'd be having a much better time as Arise does get caught up by Victor as well as the Wisps who's going to jack the double damage rune. Arise is going to make a break for it and well, Lan is there for a Fissure block. Unfortunately, he's going to get hit with a Avalanche himself, but it looks like everyone from MYM and MYI are both going to be fine for now. Yeah, and well, with a bottle charge on the Earthshaker, he'll have enough mana for another Fissure shortly, and well, it seems that that's just going to be Earthshaker's lot in life. He's going to stack up some of these large camps for the Batrider and just offer defensive Fissures if the Death Prophet gets gone on, which is kind of all you can ask of your Earthshaker. You either play him as an aggressive roamer or as an extremely defensive uh, support that just offers those Fissures for backup. Uh, Batrider is going to be able to pull the creeps over towards the side to that large camp, and that will ensure that the lane equilibrium will be a little bit more favorable towards him. Um, but yeah, it'll be looking pretty good anyway. We also have another verdict on Razor. That's actually Mitch, and uh, someone kindly asked to stop with that la da 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 <laughs> stuff. So yeah, uh, we will try to remember that it hits Mitch. But again, it seems to be like his name is la da da da. I don't know. Seems like I, I don't know. <laughs> Mitch is a whole heck of a lot easier. We'll stick with that one. Yeah, sorry about that. Probably a little annoying. Either way. 
Well, Earthshaker is able to contribute some defense, and that's about it. He could be pulling right now. Like, at any time, he's sitting in the mid lane, kind of awkwardly doing nothing. He could be getting pulls off for the Batrider, who is doing okay up on top lane. Like, he's getting a pretty good amount of experience, so he's well on his way to his level 6. A little bit behind the Clockwork, but that's pretty much to be expected versus the Razor and the Shadow Shaman, whereas Clockwork just going pretty much 1v2 versus the Rubik Lycan. Definitely not as dangerous of a lane coming out from the MYM team, but Airshaker finally will get a couple more pulls off, and Batrider, once he clears that, should have a lot of gold going towards his Blink Dagger. Yeah, Death Prophet is going to be going for a Hand of Midas this game. What are your thoughts on the item for Death Prophet? Is she really going for Hand of Midas? I think so. I don't see any items on her. Where she has a Bracer it? and Null. Oh no, that was the Lycan's Midas recipe. Oh my goodness, they were sending the courier out to Bottle Crow, um, and I just didn't hover over that. Okay, Lycan, Hand of Midas. I think that makes a lot more sense. Alright, well, either way, uh, Null Talisman Bracer is kind of a weird way to start your Death Prophet. Uh, Bracer is going to be most likely built into drums later on, but it's an intermediary item we don't usually see. Usually it's just straight into Yule Scepter, straight into Phase Boots for the Death Prophet, but stopping a little bit for some durability. I don't know if that Bracer is going to be like the magic number between living and dying from an Avalanche Toss combo, but it will certainly give her some survivability. Just I don't know if it's worth delaying the Phase Boots. Yeah, we'll have to see for now. Just getting as much stats as possible. Batrider continues to be zoned out a little bit, but still getting some decent farm, and with the quadruple stack at least in his own jungle, his Blink Dagger is going to come out at a great timing after the Tranquil Boots. Um, yeah, for now it is Mitch just right-clicking down as the Firefly pulls the Creep Aggro off. Lycanthor picks up his Hand of Midas at a little bit over 7 minutes uh, after finishing off the Basilius. I think it's fine timing for him. Yeah, it's a good timing for a Hand of Midas straight up rush, but he also stopped for the the uh, additional Sage's Mask for that Ring of Basilius. So he's going to be farming up an absolute storm. I expect the Vlads to be coming up shortly, or you know, probably Boots first, because Boots are pretty useful for any hero. So Boots into Vlads into probably Necrobook, as it looks like it's a Rise who's actually going to be clearing out this large stack. He has a Null Talisman. I'm dreaming for a Dagon, but I know it's most likely just going to be drums for him. But still, it's a lot more gold than you would ordinarily get as a Death Prophet. Yeah, I mean, he was CSing already well in lane, and now he's going to be bolstered even more. He's going to be completely out of mana because of this, uh, but on top of that, he gets like 900 gold from this stack or something ridiculous like that. Um, a little bit less than that. Um, but yeah, for now, we're still waiting on the first blood. I was, I don't know, kind of expecting these lanes to be passive, but not this much. Both of the offlaners just getting exactly what they wanted to. Now that Grazine has his level 6, um, I'd like to see him start rotating. He has 2 one 2 as his build, and he can definitely get a solo kill on, like, the Earthshaker if he catches him out alone. Um, but other than that, all of the other lanes are pretty easy to kill anyway. I'd like to see him rotate towards a rise in mid. Yeah, I can understand Understand if he was waiting for a level 6 on the Wisp, but Wisp is nowhere near that part as Milan and LeBron both clearing out quite a few stacks in their own jungle. Gonna give Tiny level 7 and another 1200 gold, so this guy's farming an absolute storm. Fissure onto Victor, and the Crypt Swarm and Shadow Shaman taking quite a large chunk of damage, but he will be fine in the end. Uh, yeah, I would have expected Grazin to have left the lane already, or 50 Sound Tard to leave the lane, but they're just chilling, happy with getting whatever experience and gold they could find. Yeah, I mean, it makes a little bit more sense that the Batrider hasn't left, as he doesn't have his Blink Dagger just yet, but still, I don't know. It, it's been very passive um, for the last couple minutes, and Earthshaker, he's been doing his pulling operations. He's level 3, which is, I don't know, really, really far behind, but after a couple of fights, that definitely can shoot up for the Earthshaker, but we're not going to expect any fast Blink Daggers coming up from him. Honestly, he's pretty much just there for the Fissure, and... I don't know. The upgrades are nice and all for the extra stats, but it's more about the block at this point. Yeah, it must not feel too good just being a walking fissure, but as you said, Batrider still is a little bit away from his Blink Dagger, and in the meantime, Tiny has gone for what looks like drums after clearing off a pretty large stack of his own, so these neutrals being very relevant to this game, a lot more so than usual, as looks like they're going to put three heroes in mid. A toss of the Death Prophet into the... Uh, toss of the Shadow Shaman into the Death Prophet, could result in a kill if they do get the correct follow-up, but still we're 10 minutes without a first blood. This is, looks like it's going to be an extremely slow game. Yeah, I don't know, Death Prophet, she is going to back out for the Yules instead of going for the drums. I don't know, it, it's definitely good. The extra stats have helped her out a little bit, but I think just going straight for the Yules would probably have benefited her a little bit more. Um, but either way, 
Still farming up very well, as is the Lycanthrope, and I'm just waiting for this push to come online. But with the item that Lycan went for in the form of the Hand of Midas, they want to take this in the late and split pushing game, and, well, they definitely can do that. And for now, it's just going to be really calm until, well, right about now, as level 6 is ticked up by LeBron, I'd like to see them make something happen. They almost have the full combo coming out from the Tiny, and it's going to do a lot of damage if they isolate somebody. They have the Clockwork Hookshot as well. They have the tools to get kills. Let's see if they're going to be able to use them effectively. They have to worry about this mid lane incoming, though. They get the avalanche toss onto a rise, bring him down to about half, but Batrider's gonna firefly over the trees and find himself a nothing. There is a wisp, and they get a two-man silence, but instantly teleportation is in from everyone. Fissure's gonna blow up the wisp first and foremost, and I think that should be it. The Razor's going to steal static link, the hook shot whiffing. I don't know where it was shot, but it didn't hit anyone. And it looks like MYI bring everyone, but they get nothing. As MYM get the first blood and then scurry away. Yeah, and we'll like in the big winner and all of that is he's been able to push out bottom and, I don't know, continues to free farm. Not really any different from what's happened previously, but, I don't know, still doing well for himself. And Although he's not able to put that much damage on the tower because he doesn't have Vlad's and uh, the items on top of that, he's getting close to that and he'll be a pushing or a relevant pushing threat soon. And MYI, they're going to look to make some pushing happen themselves. They should clear this wave pretty quickly, and then they're probably going to look to drop down some Serpent Wards. The Shadow Shaman is a very fresh level 6, but we're not going to have that because of a pause. But yeah, just look at how the level disparity is right now. The Shadow Shaman and the Wisp, both level 6, whereas the Fissure... Uh, did I say Fissure? I meant Earthshaker. He's only level 3, so he's really hurting, and that means Echo Slam is going to be delayed, and by the time he does get the Echo Slam it's not going to be doing too much. Yeah, I don't know. In, in the end, that's pretty much going to be the sum of the game as we're waiting for Urshik to get back in, and there you go. Riot's going to call it the G, and it looks like mid is going to be our next position of a big fight. Um, personally, I like long split pushing games, but this is feeling like one at 12 minutes in. Um, I don't know. It's just really awkward, especially with like a Batrider and Clockwork on the map. Some of the best pickoff heroes. They got the um, Wisp, and that's fine, but now the Batrider is actually going to do something. They get tier 1 tower down in bottom, thanks to the Lycanthropes pushing power with Hal and the Wolves. Um, yeah, that's going to be it. We have a smoke coming out from the Batrider. Will he use it? Uh, yeah, he is grouped up with the two supports. Not sure who else they'd be waiting for, honestly. And, well, there you go. Smoke coming out, and they're looking for a kill, presumably on this tiny. Let's see. They're actually drawing on the map um, in their own jungle, maybe looking for the big wraparound on bottom. Potentially baiting out this Lycanthrope. Hookshot, it's going to land on the Wolves, blocked by the Invis Wolves, and while he's trying to get the um, chase down on him, but with the ultimate, it's going to be very hard. They bring in the Tiny Wisp combo as well. Avalanche will land onto Baby Knight. Where's the toss? They don't need it as the Shackles come through, and they'll have enough damage. They are able to bring back Victor into the loving arms of the Earthshaker and Rubik. They'll get that kill at the very least. Flybreak is going to bounce back LeBron, Dota, as well as Milan. And, well, LeBron did not bring the Tiny back. He'll be able to get a toss and a kill onto the Earthshaker. Now the Static Link going the way of the Rubik. He's actually stealing damage from the Razor there as he's thrown up in the air by the Yule Scepter. Right picks himself up a double kill after cleaning up the tiny with a little bit more crypt swarm damage i don't know they're linking up the razor but razor's doing literally no damage from his auto attacks the plasma fuel does hurt a little bit for now it is going to be i think a two for three uh yeah it seems like that for now that's some uh major karma as razor is not used to be not used to ever doing zero damage with his right clicks but rubik making that so but uh yeah they spent so much time in trying to kill off the Lycan, and it almost seemed like the Lycan was about to slip away. Unfortunately enough, the Shadow Shaman was there finally for just a couple of seconds, or even less than a second, of Shackle. So they do manage to secure the Lycan by the end of that, but Death Prophet came in and cleaned up. She's 3 and 0, and MYI, they spent so much time and effort in trying to kill that hero off, and, well, they're just going to lose another tower to this wolf as he does take down top. Grazina's here, and he does not have relocate backup, so 10 seconds and he could go for this one. But I don't think he's even going to have an opening. Well, he's chilling. He's completely spotted out, by the way, from these uh, from this Observer Ward. So Grazine can't actually make anything happen. I was about to say that you could pretty much go on to whoever you want as Clockwork, knowing that you have Relocate support coming in. But I mean, that was really, really messy, hookshotting into those Wolves. And that could continue to happen. Grazine well. is going to get initiated upon. He's going to pop the cogs, but now he's stuck in a cage with a wolf, and that's never what we want to have happen. Milan and LeBron going to both jump in onto Baby Knight. The Avalanche tosses the combo will miss on the Lycan, and it looks like he'll try to get away. LeBron dropping pretty low due to the wolves. Baby Knight wants to turn around, and LeBron will get shredded by those two wolves. And it looks like ASD is going to try to juke around the trees, tossed up into the air. Craters, and that should be it as they lose yet another Tier 1 tower mid.
Yeah, well, with that tier 1 tower, Earthshaker picks himself up a Blink Dagger at 15 minutes, and with the Abysmal start he had, this is wonderful. He doesn't even have a level 6, but Blonde only dying once, and being involved in 4 kills really coming in huge there as well. Victor, he has this haste rune, and he's looking to make a move down in bottom. Potential wraparound onto the bat rider. Let's see how this is going to break down. The smoke is going to pop, and he's looking for it. He's finding the shackles. No. And drops the surfboards on the tier 1 towers. So, my and Sandy are going to make a bit of a strike back as far as towers are concerned. Um, yeah, so a little bit more gold. We have a hook shot coming up from Clockwork. Going to miss. Grazine, not going to connect on the DP or the bat. That's like 0 for 3, I think, the Clockwork right now. And, well, when you have the relocate, do you kind of want that Clockwork to open up the fight every single time with the hook shot so that you have a really clear target as to where you are going to want to send the Tiny and the Wisp combination. And if the hookshot doesn't miss, that means it's uh, more initiation time that's not going to happen. Of course, Wisps is still 10 seconds without that uh, without that relocate available to him. So he's going to farm up the jungle with Tiny as now Victor is in a lot of trouble because there's a big bad wolf going to paw him down. One, two, three hits. going to kill the Shadow Shaman. Arai is going to try to join in for some of the experience. But off of that kill, it looks like MYM might want to make a push happen. 30 seconds until Death Prophet has her ultimate, though. Yeah, for now, they're going to look for the Batrider initiation on somebody. They might find out the tiny they have a relocate if they're fast the courier is also joining the fray and it might be brought down no they're gonna focus instead on lebron no relocate is going to save milan here and now milan lifted back pulled back and they have a toss avalanche is going to land on asd asd is going to fall low but in the end yule scepter now onto the clockwork and grazine the silence is actually not going to land i thought that would the cogs might keep him safe here will he be able to run away it looks like he will i don't know blink for it earth shaker not gonna be able to get this done but the echo slam will come through onto grazine as well as the razor razor stealing a lot of damage from the earth shaker actually only 63 but it's going to be enough to get the kill onto um rise there and in the end one for two trade in the 50 favor centaur. of... 50 Centaur gets the last kill behind the tier 2 tower, but now he's going to get struck by a lot of lightning. He's going to go down, uh, making it still a rather even trade for either end. Fortunately for MYM, though, the Exorcism is up, so they could look to make a push happen. But, uh, yeah, not taking the cleanest of fights there. Yeah, in the end, Arise does have his level 11 now available to him. He's sitting at 12, and, well, the Exorcist is now going to hurt very bad. And Lycanthrope, he went for a Maelstrom, actually. This is a very peculiar build coming out from Baby Knight. Um, I would have liked to see the um, Necronomicon a little bit more, but he is going to be doing a lot of damage in the team fights as well as his pushing power is going to be bolstered a little bit. It's kind of an uncharacteristic item to see ever from Lycanthrope. Usually it's just all about that single target with the Howl, with the Feral Impulse. You want to be able to claw down one person and then claw down the next person, not claw them all equally, if that makes any sense. But uh, definitely the Static Charge for Mjolnir, if he does end up getting that, is going to be a lot hel uh, very helpful. But usually if you're going to be getting a Hyperstone on Lycan, it's going to be built into an Assault Karras. But mid lane's going to be the push. Shadow Shaman once again does have Serpent Wards available and 50 Centaur. Looking for Initiation is going to jump onto Victor, who actually got tossed in. Arise going to whiff completely on the Silence. And again, the Hookshot is going to whiff completely. Arise still on the run as Milan looking for a toss back, perhaps. Unfortunately, got jammed up a little bit. He's going to get the Avalanche into Earth Shaker. That's going to kill him off. Meantime, back end, 50 Centaur is going to burn down the Shadow Shaman with Firefly and then try to fly away from those cogs. He'll be successful in doing so. Arise sitting in the middle of this fight. He will be brought down by Mitch. But here comes the Wolf. He can go straight for the Razor. Razor should have a lot of backup. The bottle keeping him very, very healthy. Now that Static Link is going to drain out a lot of Baby Knight's damage. Looks like it will just barely be enough to keep him alive. Yes, Baby Knight's hitting for zero damage now, and Arise with one more Crypt Swarm, not going to make that happen. In the meantime, ASD being chased down by LeBron. Actually, these were stolen spirits, so LeBron being, well, kind of chasing both ways. He's going to tether forward to a creep, and Rise is going to get the kill with those spirits, and he might take down to this Urn Charge. Yes, he will. He just wastes an Urn Charge right before he dies as well. It's another huge mess of a fight. Yeah, I don't know, they've just been so spread out and everywhere. Baby Knight chasing down that Razor was quite possibly one of the most ridiculous things I've seen in a while. Hoping for those Mjolnir procs, or uh, Maelstrom procs rather. Without those, he did literally no damage. And, well, the Razor, he was able to escape for a little bit longer, but ended up being caught out at the end. Yeah, I don't know, the Earthshaker just... He blinked in, but he didn't have his Echo Slime available, so he looked for the Enchant Totem, but it got interrupted and just blown up by the Tiny to start that off. Emily Hammer is still looking pretty good as far as this game is concerned, is up in top, Grazine. Going to throw a cogs, but in the end, just defensively, is it'll be just fine, as is the Lycan. Nice little fortress of safety versus the melee here in the Lycan. However, against a Batrider, not so much. Baby Knight does have uh, well, a little bit more haste rune, but it's mostly about that shapeshift at this point. And a Batrider who's looking for initiation in. The Wisp is the person you want to be ganking. You don't want to be ganking anyone else because the Wisp can easily bring the Tiny in. And MYM, don't, they don't really have any global support, but they're looking for Victor nonetheless. 
Has 50 Centaur. Firefly, jump in, grab him, and then pull him to the big bad wolf. Rest in peace, Victor. Yep, two-shotted by the Lycanthrope, getting two crits as well as a Maelstrom proc in style, and yeah, nothing really happening for that poor Shadow Shaman. Wisp had abandoned him and gone down bottom to help out the Tiny, who's currently split pushing and working towards his Aghanim Scepter. 1k gold off of that, unless he has components on the Courier, which he does not. Um, yeah, for now, MYM are looking pretty good in this game. Their gold advantage is not that great, but it's probably going to be uh, up at about 7,500, there, thereabouts, and experience looking pretty similar as well. They also have the Hand of Midas advantage. They will be farming a little bit faster than my insanity. Though Tiny with an Aghanims with Overcharge is really, really hard to combat against unless you could very efficiently pick off that Wisp. The Tiny is just going to go to town on everyone. That's not going to happen for a little while longer as finally 50 Centaur gets hit with a hook shot. He does Firefly instantly as Grazine does shove him out. The relocate's going to come in and I'm lagging. I can't see anything. Well, they tossed in the um, clockwork that was continuing to battery assault and ended up getting a fairly easy pickoff on the Batrider. Luckily enough, I'm not lagging, so hopefully that's just isolated to you as Tiny and Wiz go back into the enemy jungle and start farming up. They're getting dangerously close to Milan's Aghanim Scepter, although not the fastest, he did back off for the drums as well as a magic stick before. Alright, I'm going to step off the action though, so that's all on you since apparently you have a better connection than I do. Not really surprising considering my internet kind of sucks here. But uh, yeah, so Batrider does go down in the end, and uh, it's not a terribly huge loss for MYM as their Lycan is really the prize here that they want to keep safe. Lycan is going to go for what looks like a BKB as it stands right now, and he's level 16, so he's going to be able to split push really quickly and really just tear down towers if the M My Insanity side doesn't have a response. Honestly, I wouldn't be opposed to a Heaven's Halberd coming out from him either, but it will be a BKB. Um, yep, I don't know, just this more standard item. It's a very peculiar build coming out from Lycanthrope. He's focusing more on the team fighting, although he's, I don't know, in rotations, looking more like he wants to split push. I would have liked to see the Necronomicon coming out a little bit better. Yeah, Necronomicon would be really good. Actually, the Heaven's Halberd is remarkably good here, though, and clearly that's not the item he's going for as he does pick up his BKB. Because Tiny doesn't usually hit, uh, he doesn't usually get the uh, Monkey King bar until super, super late, if he does at all. And the way Tiny works is that he hits very slowly, but very hard. So if you dodge a single one of those attacks, or even if you stop him from attacking altogether, then you can just go to town on him. But of course, you need that BKB so you don't get stopped in your tracks by Craggy Exterior. They're gonna jump onto Milan. They could drag him up to the high ground right now, but the relocate out from LeBron, it will not save him as the Wisp does get sent up into the air. Now he's in a very awkward position. He's gonna be brought down by a Fissure instantly into the Roche Pit with the rest of that shapeshift, popping the Exorcism as well. This is going to be a free one for MYM, and I don't think M My Insanity can do anything about this outside of some really heroic clockwork play. Yeah, I don't know, let's see. Grazine might look for the seal, but that's so risky. Um, he might throw in a flare and maybe look for it, but in the end, he's just going to back off. So yeah, Roshan is dropped Aegis onto this Lycan. This dude is really powerful at this stage of the game. Level 17 is... Well, pretty comfortably ahead everyone else on the enemy end, with Razor being the closest at level 14, so a very nice level advantage for the Lycan. And also for the Death Prophet, who's level 16 versus the 14, so she's going to actually go for a Bloodstone. That's uh, not my favorite item on the Death Prophet, but still, if you're getting these kills, and if you just want to tank up, then it's a decent enough item. Yeah, I don't know. Being able to spam with the Crypt Storms is nice, but I think as far as tank is concerned, getting a BKB or maybe even just a straight up heart is usually a little bit better. Um, I don't know. It's nice if you're able to get the constant kills so you can keep the Crypt Storm on cooldown the entire time. They're just going to go for top lane. Batrider is going to, I believe that fire is in vision of this tower, so... Uh, the fire is actually not, as Batrider is going really, really deep, looking for a poor, poor victim. Who's it going to be, Batrider? Is it going to be Victor? Is it going to be no one because he just got spotted by the Razor? It doesn't have to be anyone because the Lycan is just tearing down the tower. Grazine going to look to initiate. He does get a long lasso in onto the Centaur, but instantly gets sent up into the air. Here comes the, the relocate, but instantly there's silence. Maybe not going to turn around with BKB and just go to town on Grazine. The Cog's in the though, going to keep him safe in the end. Super Wars are deployed as ASD is completely stuck, as is Arise. Maybe Knight can't get his hands onto anyone. Now he's getting damage stolen from him. They'd lose the Rubik in the end, MYM, for their force to fall back. Is there anyone else who's going to die? Mitch is looking for that bat rider. I don't think he's going to find him. They're going to turn around onto Victor. Two-man Fissure will keep him all safe, though. 
No, no, for now, they're sticking around, and they drop the Exorcism. They want to make a turn here. Yule Scepter onto the Titan. It's going to delay a little bit of that damage. His baby knight is hexed up. They drop the Avalanche onto a Rise and Rise. Is he going to fall before he gets to kill him? Well, and he will. And now, they need to claim that kill. This damage is being stolen by Baby Knight, and Baby Knight is still trying to man fight up against us. He's losing all of his damage, and now you can't trade with that Razor. Even if he does get a lot of damage, he might be able to get LeBron, but he needs those Mjolnir procs. He can't do anything without that lightning damage, as he's doing literally none. And, well, blink forward by the Batrider. They get that kill, and he loses his Aegis to start things off. At least to get the Tiny, and now. Well, with the Batrider here, he's just getting cleaved to death by the Razor. That extra 168 damage coming in huge. In the end, I think that was a 3 for 3 as well as the Aegis? Oh, it's oh, not Victor. over yet. Oh. Poor Shadow Shaman there, just getting bopped by the Enchant Totem coming out from the Irish Shaker. Yeah, Lycan, uh was... Well, we could really see the power of Razor versus Lycan in this scenario. Lycan, I kind of understand the Maelstrom pick a little bit more because there's no way that you could actually block that static link once it's on you. You can't, like, Manta or BKB out of it. It's just stuck on you. Maelstrom does give him some way of doing damage outside of it, though it's still kind of... Now he's going to be wielding that Mjolnir, though. So static charge, going to be doing a little bit more passive damage as he's wandering around in those fights. It's, a un again, an unconventional item for Lycan, but I think this scenario is uh, perfectly excusable. Yeah, I don't know, for now, Clockwork Flare going, you get eyes on Baby Knight, and he jumps in, he gets the cogs, he's caught out, but now the BKB teleport comes in, Baby Knight looks like he's just gonna die, he tries to TP out, and he'll be just fine, actually. Uh, Toss was the only way they could have cancelled that through BKB, and in the end, too many units around to reliably get that. Yeah, so 20-13 to 13 right now, MYM still at a very comfortable lead, as they're actually extending their golden experience lead with each passing moment. This Lycan is getting very, very big, and, well, he's actually pretty full on item slots. You can sell the Vlads, maybe eventually replace the Vlads with something that's uh, still in the same vein, something like a Satanic or something like that. But uh, he's, for the most part, as strong as he's going to get, at least uh, as far as big jumps in item strength goes. They could group up on the bottom lane and look to help Arise push. Fortunately, for the MYM side, they're actually going to go for Milan. They drag him really deep, but Baby Knight, stunned up by the Kragi Steer, he doesn't actually have a BKB. Looks like they will commit the Echo Slam onto Milan. They should bring him down as they will. And here comes Mitch and LeBron as the Wolf does charge right in. Jump forward from 50 Centaur. Going to look to lay down some Napalm. They secured the kill on the Wisp, and now Mitch is all alone. Exism is deployed. Echo, uh, the Enchant Totem, going to stun him up for just a little while. But Mitch is just going to barely survive. Another Crypt Storm will kill him off. And a lift forward onto Grazine. That's going to be a four for one trade. And even a little bit of tower damage. They might even kill this tower in its entirety. They, they will. They could even keep going, actually. Yeah, Shadisham got the tier 1 tower up and top in the meantime, but definitely does not excuse the trade that went on, and, well, Exorcism is about to wear off, but they'll put a decent amount of damage, and, well, with 20 seconds without a Clockwork or a Tiny, there's very little they can do, and this tier 3 tower might just be dead as they jump in, they catch eyes onto poor Victor, and Victor is destroyed by Baby Knight and company, as, well, the tier 3 tower is going to die, and now the melee barracks also under siege. This Lycan's doing about 300 damage a pop a very, very quickly. Wisp is up, Tiny will be up. But they're going to be fighting a Rax down. MYM could very, very safely back up and then, you know, go fill their mana pools, go get their items or whatnot, and then go for one of these side tier 2 towers because there's really nothing they could do in the mid lane anymore. Rax has taken 330 minutes, not bad. Uh, it's not entirely crippling, but it will be a very an large annoyance for the My Insanity team. A little bit more than a large annoyance is this Lycanthrope is almost doubling up the Tiny as far as net worth is concerned. Thinking about an Assault Kuras next with another Hyperstone on Baby Knight. And, I don't know, uh, if there is a hero that is good against a barracks down, it is a tiny, he can cleave through the mega creeps fairly easily, but the items are just not going to come out for tiny, and he's going for a BKB next. There's very little he's going to actually be able to do. If he gets caught out, he's pretty much dead. In a super late game scenario, I don't really know if there's anything you could do against a wisp tiny combination, but we are not there yet, because tiny still has a couple of item slots to fill. I mean, you could ship the magic wand, the ogre club's going to be built on something, has a just a plain empty slot as inventory, and then the drums can also be upgraded, so Tiny has a huge way to go before he's actually maxed out, but catching up Baby Knight might be a good way to start. If they land the Avalanche Toss combo, or just Grazine with the Cogs, gonna catch the Wolf, but Grazine gonna get turned around upon, suddenly Wolves in a cage hitting you from within the cage, Baby Knight's gonna get War Trapped, but he doesn't give a damn, he's gonna chase down everyone, where's this Razor? He's doing too much damage, Baby Knight will finally go down, ending the Wicked Sixty, but the Flame Break does come in to kill off the Wisp, and then the, the last out of the Shadow Shaman, Milan is going to play some games with this Batrider, but ASD comes in with a Fade Bolt. Lycan is just too damn jacked right now as Razor does pick up a kill on the Urshak in the back end. It'll try to chase after Ryze, and Ryze needs a TP out of here. 
he should be fine, I think, unless he oh, he blinks south, or yeah, he blinks south and he should be fine. But in the meantime, a rise up top is forcing the issue up on that lane. Yeah, I don't know. There's very little they can do. They TP up the Razor, and well, that'll secure um, Rubik's retreat there. And well, a rise for now is going to back off. He has a completed Shiva's Garden. They have the complete Assault Curious on that courier. A lot of armor uh, for your little dragon or whatever the heck that thing is. Um, yeah, I don't know. Lycanthrope was just able to turn so effectively. They thought they caught him out in the cogs, but he just BKB'd, munched straight through the clockwork, and almost killed three heroes alone with the extra magic damage. TP away by um, Ace here as he goes back all the way back to base. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The Lycan is just too farmed. Had he had the Assault Kuros, that might have been three kills for him. Well, yeah, at the very least, he wouldn't have died because my and Sandy really, their physical damage without the Razor is not too impressive. Tiny with Overcharge is doing 300 damage a pop, which is nice, but still against this Lycan with the BKB, you cannot burn through him before he burns through you. It's just not going to happen. Now with the Assault Kuras up, he's going to be attacking even faster. 0.43 seconds per attack. This is going to hurt a lot. Yeah, especially if you get some crits coming out when you're in the uh, over or in the um, ultimate form. The Shadow Shaman and Wisp don't stand a chance, and well, neither does a Clockwork for that matter. Tiny's right decently equipped to defend against that with a lot of HP as well as a decent amount of armor with the maxed out Craggy. But I don't know. You saw when he was inside the Cogs, Milan almost died just straight up from the Lycanthrope. So it's it's not looking pretty right now for my insanity. And for now, they are going to group up down towards bottom. Potentially looking for a pickoff. Let's see if they find the bat. Four staff away. Avalanche going to completely miss. And, well, Ace is going to be just fine. But Bland and Rise, they're also going to blink away from Grazine. Hook shot. You got it. On to Rise. And I don't think Rise is going to escape, although a Fissure will separate the two of them. He's four staffs down to the south. A Rise is going to get a pretty nice silence. Where's the Exorcism? There it is. He's just going to go down. And here comes Baby Knight. He's going to tear through Victor. And, no, the Ghost Scepter is going to save him for now. But they're instead going to go for Milan as well as that Wisp. Baby Knight actually can't get his claws into anyone just yet. But it'll eventually happen. They already taken down two. Instantly, the other two fall. Lycan killing the Wisp. Death Prophet with a tiny kill. Razor, once again, is nowhere to be found. But honestly, I think that's going to be good for my insanity. They would have lost the Razor for sure if he was also in that fight. Pretty much. He has an Aghanim Scepter and a Mac. He can take through a decent amount, but in the end, it wouldn't have been enough. Yeah, last year, two towers standing on the side of my insanity is going to fall. And I think high ground is going to be no exception. With 20 seconds to no wisp and 40 with no tiny, their hopes of the defense are very bleak here. Um, yeah, exorcism is down, which I guess is silver lining. But if you have a lichen throw protecting that tier 3, it doesn't matter. It's going to fall. It's going to fall really quickly. This is without Howl, and this tower is getting absolutely bulldozed. There's nothing that my insanity could do about this. If we're watched, there's the hook shot in from Grazine. Gonna get the cogs on Baby Knight, but this is not where we want to be, Grazine. He doesn't have a BKB, actually, so Baby Knight actually, actually got to turn around. And, well, there it is. Now he has a BKB. Gonna go to town on Grazine. Now, who's he gonna go for? Gonna be Mitch. He's gonna try to man fight this Razor. He's losing a lot of damage, actually, so he can't do it effectively. They don't take the Raxes, and it looks like 50% might also go down to the Plaza Field. Lives with 17 HP. Everyone from MYM is escaping? That's just absurd. With the exception of the Rubik, but... Yeah, I don't know, Batrider and Lycanthrope escaped with so little HP there. And as well as the Earthshaker, the Batrider only lived because of a really nice fissure coming out uh, from Blonde there. He was able to uh, make sure the Plasma Field didn't catch him out. Invis Rune picked up by the Death Prophet instantly popped. As they're posturing around the Roshan pit, Roshan is coming to say hello, and I don't know, this is... I don't know, a, a little bit extra room that my Insanity can use to work with, but I don't think it's long before the... Siege is going to come as Victor. Ugh, it's not looking too great. He might even be able to get the Courier here. Uh, let's see. Do they have enough backup to go for this? Courier is going to go off to the side. Arise is invised up still. And they can start this off with a double silence. They're instead, going to go for Blonde. He's going to be able to force half away and live. And Baby Knight, he's hiding inside the Ancients. He's going to munch away through uh, Victor. But in the end, he'll be able to go after and be just fine. A lot of damage being sold by the Lycan. He tosses forward the IO, but he's not going to be able to get enough damage. Or Willie, the Wisp Spirits will be there. And in the end, Lycanthrope to fall. He has buyback. But this might be the opening they were looking for. Clockwork is going to get caught inside the cogs with Arise's exorcism running. And oh my goodness, that was really big lag. As. That's not good. Double kill for a rise. I have no idea how, but Shadow Shum just not going to be able to stand to that exorcism. Now that the Batrider Mask of Madness activated, he's trying to get somebody as a lasso. They're going to Yule Scepter up to Tiny, and now Rise is being healed up. Don't think they have the damage to go for that. And in the end, that's going to be all. Yeah, Arise just ran into two targets consecutively with that exorcism active. I like how we're trading out lag. It's a 
kind of inconvenient, but also kind of sweet. Milan, going to get lifted up in the air, going to be thrown to the other side of that visual wall. Bland going to drop the Echo Slam, not do too much of anything. Can they bring down this Tiny with the heals from the Wisp? I don't think it's possible. And now Rise in a little bit of trouble. He's being whipped down by the Razor, and he should fall at the very least. Yep, Toss will kill him off, and who else is on the chopping block? It's going to be Batrider, who is making his way out very swiftly with that Mask of Madness movement speed. But uh, yeah, MYM, they decided to take that fight, starting out with Lycan having less than half HP. Never a good idea, so Lycan unfortunately couldn't actually get enough life steal from killing off a target or something like that, so my sanity get kind of a pretty large break in that uh, last fight, though they can't really capitalize on it. Maybe they could have if they went straight for Roshan, but with Batrider hanging around, that's a little bit too risky. Yeah, for sure. Batrider almost got tagged by a hookshot coming out from the clockwork. That was a little too close for comfort uh, for Ace here, but he'll just go ahead and farm up. This is almost your full six-slotted Batrider build, presumably going for the Scythe next. Um, I don't know. It's a little bit of extra room for my Insanity to work on, but is it going to be enough? They have a Yasha and Ogre Club on Tiny. He just doesn't do that much, except for damage when he has the uptime, but the problem is he's not getting that. Last fight was a little bit different because Lycanthor Brandon with half HP was like springing a trap, but in the end he just got drained of his damage and wasn't able to do anything. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see how it's going to break down for the next time, but I don't see uh, my insanity winning as convincingly as they did. Especially since Baby Knight is very, very close to his heart, which isn't the item that I would have gone for. I think. If you're going to sell the Satanic, then it's probably... If you're going to sell the Vlad, it's going to be the Satanic that you pick up. But either way, he's going to be extremely tanky moving forward. Still, the Razor is going to be his biggest bane. Because if he gets his damage drained out, then suddenly he can't go from one target to another to another. Because, well, he can't kill anyone, so he's forced to back off there. But, uh, yeah, if he, as long as he avoids uh, being close in those fights versus the Razor, he should be okay to just claw everyone down, provided that... They don't have Ghost Scepters. Right now, Victor is the only one. Actually, no, the Wisp has his as well. So they need Ghost Scepters. Everyone from My Insanity, or at the very least, Blade Mails, and they're going to try to hit timings. There's a jump in onto Victor. The Avalanche does miss. They drop the Shadow Shaman right into the clutches of an Earth Shaker. They'll bring him down first. Who else is around? Looks like the answer is no one. That's fine, though, because they're going to go straight for Roshan following that. Use the Exorcism for this. And I don't know if that was completely necessary, though. It looks like uh, Baby Knight has his hands full with a couple of Ancients, wants enough gold for that heart, but they're going to claim this Roshan really easily anyway. Well, if you take a look at Rubik's items, he has a Shadow Amulet. Honestly, I would have liked to see him pick up the um, Vladimir's Offering to give that aura the way of the Lycanthrope in these teamfights, and I think that's going to be a lot more effective. He used it on the Earthshaker casually, but in the end, it didn't even fade before Bland moved again, so... Um... I don't know. I, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I don't know. It, it seems like more of a trolling item on Rubik. I, I want to see it work out for him, um, but really it's doing nothing. Yeah, 30 attack speeds, DPS Rubik is the new thing, I'm sure, but Shadow Amulet is not actually a real build on Rubik, guys, so don't do that unless you know that you're with utmost certainty that you're going to be winning the game. And MYM, they should feel pretty comfortable right now. They have the initiation advantage with Batrider. They have pushing power with Death Prophet. And they have an extremely tanky wolf with 3,400 HP plus 26 armor. Uh, MYM are sitting pretty in this game. And my insanity, they just need more time to get this tiny more items. If he gets his man style, then that's a step in the right direction. But that's still a very long ways away. Yeah, if Tiny had, like, Manta BKB AC, maybe they'd have a better shot at doing this, but... As it stands, Tiny's still nowhere compared to the Lycanthrope. His farm is closer to that of the Batrider. And that's still okay amounts of farm, but uh, definitely not enough if you're going to be the chief hardcore farmer of the My Insanity side. You need a little bit more because you're dueling against a Lycan who at this point is almost 100% six slotted. Uh, he sold the Midas, he sold the Vlads, and he has an empty inventory slot once he burns that Aegis, but Still, it's uh, not fun going up against this Lycan. For now, it's just a waiting game until the high ground push comes out from uh, MYM here as... Well, we're just waiting for them to put this Aegis to good use. Their bottom and mid lanes are already pushing out fairly comfortably. Um, although Tiny will enjoy some farm in bottom. That's going to be about it. Death Prophet's currently pushing out top with the... Um, the rest of her team, nowhere to be found, but she has boots of travel, so if they want to go for it, they definitely can. I think what they're waiting for most of all is just somebody poke their head outside of the base so they can jump them with the bat. Yeah, and as soon as they get someone killed, then Death Prophet will instantly either 
teleport down to the bottom lane or just pop exorcism and just go whole hog up on top. Either way, my insanity are going to be forced into a fight that they really wouldn't want to take. Either you know defend four v five against a or four v four against a team that is pretty far ahead of you, or try to kill off the death prophet who is grinding your towers. In the meantime, you lose bottom raxes. So. If MYM are just slow and steady with this pushing style, then they will eventually force Tan and Mayan Sanity to do something in order to break the status quo. Yeah, and while Death Prophet is going to jump on the Heart Bandwagon, she's going to have her own, and while Arise is going to be incredibly tanky, I don't really think that Mayan Sanity have the damage in order to take them down unless Razor gets a ridiculous link off, which he has in the past, um, but it's really something you don't want to be counting on. Wolf spotting out everything on the high ground, and looks like they're going to move Every single hero down as they do get a lasso on to the tiny, huge target to bring down. Can they kill off this tiny before he relocates? Yes, they will. Baron is in, LeBron is in the middle of everything, but the wolf is hot on his trail. The static link doesn't last very long. Baby Knight's still holding a lot of damage. In the meantime, the rest of his team is dead. Tiny does fly back into this game. Razor being chased down by a very angry wolf. Doing a lot of damage to Baby Knight in the process. 50 Centaur going to jump forward for a little bit of movement speed, uh, slowing on him, but Milan in the back end is going to try to go for Blan. I don't think he could get this kill. He's going to be uh, stuck in the corner now. Where is the rest of the heroes? There's 50 Centaur going to jump in, plus the lift up, and Milan will be brought down for a second time. Rose is the only one to survive, and he's the only one to call GG. At the end of the day, it was just overwhelming what MYM were bringing to the table. Um, it was all on whether or not my and Sandy were able to weather the storm and take like multiple bad fights. Uh, off of MYM at the end of the day, they weren't able to do that. And they're tiny, although one of the scarier late game heroes, if he doesn't have farm, he's not very scary. Yeah, because he never actually got to that late game, even though the timer does say 40 minutes, 499, and the tiny is not where you want to be. You want to be more around the lines of 9323, where the Lycan did ultimately end up with over 700 gold and EXP per minute. The moral of the story, guys, ban Lycan, or at least don't let him get a free time. Yeah, if you're going to let Lycan through, shut him down early, and at the very least have tools that you're able to combat him with. Because in this game, they just weren't able to catch him out. Whenever they got him in the cogs or anything like that, he was able to turn and get some kills of his own. So that's going to round it out for the Gigabyte Challenge number 7. Wasn't actually sure that this game was going to go through, but it is a best of one. Meet your makers are going to advance on to the next round tomorrow. We are going to have the uh, first round of games uh, being PR versus the Moscow Five. And, well, Meet Your Makers will be facing whoever won the other series that was going on that was, I believe, being cast on Join Dota Blue. Not sure if we took that one up. Uh, but either way, if you NVMI. like the casting... What? NVMI won, so... Okay. Yep. So if you like the casting here, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at TV, and you can find the VODs uploaded to YouTube.com slash Heflamoke if you want to share those. They'll be uploaded either later today or at the very least tomorrow. I've been one of your casters, Grandis Fee, and I've been joined by Mike Loris, GG to both teams.